hi, this is Makeda Valletta, aka The Body Scientist, and this is part two of my raw honey and raw milk series. So in this part, we're going to continue talking about the many benefits of raw honey and raw milk. So there has been a lot of controversy around milk in lately, I could say maybe the past 20 years, or just fairly recently, a lot of controversy. And as a nutritionist, I've worked with a lot of clients who consume rice milks and soy milk and almond milk. And I must say that to be careful with consuming the commercial versions of those, I definitely do not think that commercial soy milk, commercial rice milk, or commercial almond milk is a good substitute for raw animal milk. And the reason why I say this is because if the commercial milks, like right here, I have Rice Dream, organic Rice Dream, and it says that it's enriched with vitamins A, D, B12, and calcium. So that means that they added, they artificially added it in. And a lot of times with vitamins, well, practically all the time, when something is so-called enriched and they added in the vitamins, they add in a chemical form that is not the same chemical form that we actually need to that you know that our body actually needs that we would get from food. And that can be dangerous because that can cause deficiencies. <clears throat> so in this milk, in this commercial rice milk, it says in the ingredients that there's um, organic expeller pressed safflower and or sunflower and or canola oil. And there's also vitamin D too. Now, for one, with the expeller press oils, that's not good because all oils should be cold pressed. The more unsaturated a fat is, the more unstable it is when it is applied to heat, light, and air. So that means unsaturated, like olive oil is a monounsaturated fat, but then you have polyunsaturated fats like fish oil that come from like salmon and tuna, cold water fish. Um, the canola oil, the sunflower oil, safflower oil, those are all unsaturated fats. So they're very unstable molecules. They need to be kept cold in the dark, you know, out of the light, out of the heat, and away from air, away from oxygen. So expeller press oils means that they use heat to press the oil. When they use heat to press the oil, that mutates the fat and it makes it rancid. And then when you then apply heat to it, um, you cook with, you know, some kind of corn oil or soybean oil, that further mutates the oil. Also, these unsaturated vegetable oils, these are all omega-6, and we need omega-6 fats like we need omega-3 fats, but we need a lot more omega-3 than we do omega-6. Omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory, omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. And we need both, but we need more of the anti-inflammatory, the omega-3. So these are already omega-6 fats, so they're already pro-inflammatory fats. Then when you expel or press it and you use heat, then that further mutates it, it makes it more pro-inflammatory. So that's not good. That makes us a highly inflammatory, actually cancer-causing food because of that. Then vitamin D2. We need vitamin D3. That's the form that we get from the sun and that we get from animal foods like raw milk. Vitamin D3 is what our body needs. Vitamin D2 is an artificial form that mimics vitamin D3 and it competes with vitamin D3 for receptive sites in our body so it can lead to a very um, severe vitamin D deficiency. Anyone with brown skin who lives in the north it has 100% vitamin D deficiency in the winter when blood tests are done because our primary source is from the sun. So when we're covered up, and even people who might live in the south or live in hot places where it's sunny a lot, may have on business suits all the time or be a part of a religion where they wear a lot of clothes so not much of their skin is exposed to the sun and then they may be in their car all the time, in their office buildings so they're really not getting enough sun. You need sun over all of your skin in order to get enough vitamin D. And the darker your skin, the more sun you need. So you already have a vitamin D deficiency if you're mostly covered up, mostly indoors, living in the north during the winter months. So to add food that has vitamin D2 can only exacerbate that problem. So this is the reason why I do not think that this is a healthy, better option, okay? Because again, you wanna get foods as close to nature as possible. My, um, the way that I approach nutrition is as fresh as possible, as close to nature as possible, and as local as possible. So as fresh as possible, as close to nature as possible, and as local as possible. This is a highly processed food. This does not come from nature, okay? So if you're going to drink rice milk or 
almond milk, nut milks, make them yourself. But the commercial milks, I can promise you, if you look at if you look at your thing, they almost always have vitamin D2. A lot of times they have expelled pressed oils. And vitamin A palmitate, which is um, an artificial version of vitamin A, which is not so great either. And then there's vitamin D12 added and calcium, right? So now we have raw milk again. Raw milk has naturally occurring calcium in it. And calcium needs fats in order to be uptaken properly. So the fats that are in the raw milk helps to make the calcium more absorbable. There are lots of groups of people around the world in Switzerland, the Maasai, a lot of um, Africans who live in the deserts, India, Russia, who consumed a lot of raw milk and they were very tall, very well built, very strong bones, very healthy people. And a lot of times there are people who live more inland. Also, raw milk has natural bacteria. Those bacteria would produce vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 has been added to this. It naturally occurs in this. Calcium has been added to this and naturally occurs in this. Vitamin A naturally occurs in raw milk. Vitamin A doesn't occur in plants. Vitamin A is only found in animal foods. There are a lot of vegetarians who will say that, oh, you can get vitamin A from carrots and, and fruits and vegetables. No, you can get beta carotene from that. Beta carotene is not vitamin A. Beta carotene is the precursor of vitamin A. And our body has to expend a lot of energy to make it into vitamin A. So you need like six units a bit of carotene to get one unit of real vitamin A. So for babies and children and people with metabolic issues, hypothyroid um, issues and some other health problems, it really isn't um, the, the, that transfer, that metabolic um, cycle of transferring bit of carotene to vitamin A is not very efficient. So you have to be very careful with that. True vitamin A is only found in animal foods and it's found naturally in raw milk. And so you see all that has been added to this so-called enriched product. Okay, this comes from nature, has been consumed for thousands of years. This doesn't. This comes from a laboratory. Okay? So now we come back to the discussion of raw milk and raw honey again. And raw honey has been used as a spermicide. It's in the papyrus in the ancient Egyptian text, the oldest medical documents. Raw honey and raw milk and wine actually are in so many of the recipes for a lot of different health for a lot of different ailments. When I was in Costa Rica teaching my central strength training workshop, there was an elder woman who was a beekeeper and she spoke a lot because I studying the bee priestesses and the food the foods that come from bees is a huge part of my research. And she talked about how um, yogurt and raw honey in the vaginal canal at night is very good to help balance the bacteria in the vaginal canal and to help heal certain things. And yogurt and the bacteria in um, raw milk is lactic acid producing. That lactic acid helps to keep the vaginal canal acidic as does lemon juice and the raw honey is also very potent antiviral. So these things help to keep our vaginal canals also very healthy and is also um, raw honey and raw milk and old um, raw milk has been documented as a spermicide as well. So and then for the skin Raw honey and raw milk help to keep the moisture in our skin. There are fats in the milk and fat and protein works together. The alpha hydroxy acid fats that are in the milk help to replenish the skin and honey as well. Honey, raw honey has also, it, it traps in moisture. So they both help your skin to glow and be very healthy. So that is it for the raw honey and raw milk lecture. Okay, so again, my name is Makeda Valletta. You can find me at Twitter at Queen underscore Makeda. Thank you.